Hi everyone, I'm Shaylin with Readsy, and today we're going to be talking about author websites. If you have a book for sale or if you're building a platform to prepare for a career as an author, a website is pretty much unessential. People want to be able to find you and know how to contact you and also know where to buy your book. An author website functions as a hub for your entire platform. So because a website is such an important part of your online platform as an author, there are a few things to keep in mind when you're building one so that it's as effective and user-friendly as possible. First of all, make it easy for visitors to buy your book. Link to various online retailers like Amazon, The Book Depository, um, Barnes & Noble, Indigo, or you could also use book to link which will give you a universal link for your book. If it's hard for visitors to see how to purchase your book, they might not think you even have a book for sale and you could miss out on a lot of sales, so make this really clear and easy. Number two, share who you are. As much as it's important to make your book really accessible, you also want to give visitors a feel for who you are as an author, so include a bio, ways to contact you, and your social media link. Number three, get your visitors contact info. Allow visitors to sign up for your mailing list since few are going to return to your website Website without good reason. I mean, how often do you just visit author websites? I'll visit an author's website one time, but I'm probably never going back. So if you want readers to stay updated on when you have new publications, try to get them to sign up for your mailing list. Next up, emphasize your cover art rather than a photo of yourself. As a writer, no one really cares what you look like, but your book's cover is the most recognizable part of your brand. Although you might include a photo of yourself on your author page, don't base the entire design around a photo of yourself. Rather use your cover art. I've seen really beautiful websites that incorporate the cover design really well and those are some of my favorite author websites. I think that they're the most aesthetically pleasing and they also do a really good job of centering the author's entire brand around their book. Along with that, use your specific brand. Match your website to your book's genre and tone and cover aesthetic. If you write dark psychological thrillers but then your website is kind of cutesy with like pastel colors and maybe some birds, it doesn't really match the tone of your book. Think of your website as being a cohesive part of your brand along with your cover art, so try to make those things align. Make sure your website runs on all devices. A website working on desktop but not on someone's phone is kind of 2013 at this point. I think we're beyond this. So if you're using a website like Word WordPress, make sure that the theme that you're using also works on mobile because some of them don't. Next up, use open graph tags. So if you've never heard of an open graph tag before, it's essentially a piece of code that makes your website pages much easier to share. You can set the image, title, and description that will show up, and this makes it much easier to share your website on social media platforms where you'll get a lot more exposure than if your website is kind of just sitting there on its own. Create a lead magnet. A lead magnet is some kind of incentive to try to get people to sign up for your newsletter. You could offer some kind of free content, like a short story or novella, or a chapter from your book, or even an entire ebook. If you have an old book on your backlist and you're trying to promote your newest book, you could offer that one for free. When designing your website, remember that less is more. Too many elements become really cluttered really fast, especially if you're not a professional web designer, it's best to keep it minimal, and especially don't use too many fonts. That can become really distracting and it kind of just looks amateur. If you're not too comfortable with your web design skills, try to use a pretty clean, minimal template. This will be really easy to read and it will still look pretty professional. And finally, if you can, and if it seems important for your platform, invest in your website. You could consider investing in professional web design or some kind of hosting platform. So the first website that kind of stood out to me was Helen Oyami's. Um, and the reason this one stood out to me is because it just has a really clean design. It's very easy to navigate. I especially like the way she has the tiles of her books laid out. I think that this is very aesthetically pleasing. One thing I did notice was that I actually don't think it's up to date because I'm pretty sure she has a new book coming out very soon. So that's one key is to always keep your websites up to date. And it's very easy to purchase her, her books. You just hover over them. Another one that stood out to me was Ingrid Rojas Contreras. Um, this is really simple. This is um, a very simple website, but um, I think I, I saw a lot of websites that were basically all the same Squarespace template. Um, and this one I thought was really, you know, clean and simple, um, but still being different. I really like what she did with incorporating her cover design um, on the page about her book. I also took a look at Ann Patchett. Well, I think it kind of matches her brand as an author really well. Um, 
she didn't have a mailing list that I could see, which kind of surprised me because she's Ann Patchett. Maybe if you're as successful as Ann Patchett, you don't need a mailing list. I don't know. Again, she's got all the books laid out in tiles, which I think is the nicest way where you can click on them and um, see more of the book. The next one I wanted to look at was Erin Morgan Stearns. And although there are some things I would do differently here, I don't know how I really feel about the actual design. There was one thing that really stood out to me and it's that she has this books I love page. Um, there's Ben Ca Bel Canto we were just looking at, where she, you know, lists all of these books that she likes. Showed me she was supporting other authors. That made me want to support her. Also taking a look at Victoria Schwab's website, I think what she did a really good job of was keeping in line with her branding. You know, everything is in the color scheme of her her series um, and the majority of her books. So it's very well suited to the aesthetic of her of her work. And then taking a look at another author who's really well branded in terms of everything being, you know, kind of in line with his work is Mark Dawson. Um, you know, he has all of his books. He has so many books. Um, so, you know, he has a drop down menu and then all of the different books in the series. Um, you know, you can get a really clear idea for what his work is like and um, the tone of his work by looking at his website. And finally taking a look at a YA author, this is Jenny Nelson. Um, here she really used her cover as design to create her website. She used the same font, she used the cover art. Um, it really is very well matched to her book. Um, and I think it's a really fun website. I think it suits her work really well. So that's everything on this video on author websites. Uh, let me know in the comments, do you have a website? Thank you so much for watching and remember to subscribe for new writing, editing, and publishing videos every Tuesday and Friday. Until next time.